and talk. <laughs> There we go. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of College Hoops 2K8. We are here with San Diego State once again, I think. Uh, we are 7-1, and one, and we've been through uh, a series of uh, solid wins. Oh, yeah, that's right. We had some... I mean, we won all three games, but especially that Arizona State one was very iffy. Um, so we got Marquette, which should be probably another potentially iffy game for us. Uh, Wisconsin, who doesn't look like they're, I mean, they're four and four, but they're just as good as we are. So Marquette's technically worse than us. And then we have Houston, who for some reason, I, maybe it's their conference because they're an 81, but they always seem to be like... They always seem to be undefeated when we play them. I don't want. I don't know what type of non-conference games they choose to to do, but uh, we can get into our Marquette game here. There we go. So hey guys, and and welcome you guys in the chat. Appreciate it. Mm. Golden Eagles square up against the San Diego State Aztecs. This should be a Yeah, I did some extra hours last week. <clears throat> Wouldn't mind doing it again this week and and forward. Especially considering Christmas time is coming. And I might be damn well non existent come come ne come like this time next month. You got McDonald's delivered. You feel like the one percent. <laughs> My uh, roommate was just talking to me about. Uh, he he is a uh, well, actually, he was an assistant GM for uh, a noodles and company store. But I guess he told me a story as of today. They fired the GM because of some nonsense, and uh, now he's officially the general manager of a store, and. Uh, Oh god, I forgot. I can just left trigger. Thanks, Tracy. But um Ah, that was terrible. That was an awful release. But uh yeah, apparently Noodles and Company does like corporate deliveries, I guess now. Like uh offices where people, you know, can't really leave their office so they get food delivered, which I think any I think just about any decent office would have food available, some sort of food. I always imagine a lot of offices being able to at least have, like, because I do know of a lot of ones in uh, downtown Des Moines that have, like, a cafeteria. Like, one, one that I used to walk by all the time when I actually lived downtown, the cafeteria was pretty much, like, right out on the street. So it was, like, a nice... Like, it, it looked like a very nice cafeteria, and they were, like, remodeling it whenever I'd walk by it. Oh, my God. But, yeah, I could really use a little bit of overtime with all the money that's going to be going out of my wallet soon. I'm going to have to eat cheap. <laughs> I'm going to have to eat super cheap. I just realized, like, the sort of... The sort of things that are coming up because, you know, holiday uh, video game season and all that's coming up. And for me, with my Switch, that means a little bit extra on top of that. I mean, Jesus. Um, Super Mario Odyssey comes out the 27th, I think. Uh, WWE 2K18 comes out, but I'm thinking I might just... Oh man, it's gonna be tough. It might be a Black Friday purchase for me. I don't know if I. This might be one of the first, one of the first years I don't get it on day one. Why do my players have a Wi-Fi signal? I have. I, I guess this is just how they did the the. That's how they did the the range. Like that's how the range thing worked. I think I think Two K Ten had that. I remember ha I remember seeing that when I first started playing Two K Ten. Um, that that was that was kind of how they made it look. You know, the more bars you have, the the better shot you have from there. Oh my God! 
But yeah, I'm honestly considering like doing WWE on like maybe Black Friday if I can get a deal on that. I don't think I want to spend the $60 right away on it. But yeah, let's see. Super Mario Odyssey. I kind of... <laughs> Jack's not here. One of my mods, but... Uh, he and I already talked talked each other into getting uh, uh, Center on Kagura. It's already out, but neither one of us have it quite yet. Ah, goddamn! I gotta I gotta make like smarter shots here. And then um, I think he's I think he's also gonna get Xenoblade Chronicles two. I might get that. Ah, what? He didn't even like get a chance to shoot or do anything. He just kind of like stopped in front of him. God damn. Am I, am I touching NBA 2K18 ever again? Yeah. I just started a My League series. I don't know if you were here for that. But yeah, I did a... Uh, the, the night I was going to do TEW and it kind of like screwed up on me. The night before I actually did TEW, um, I started a my my career is ass. Personally, um, I like I don't mind my career that much. The gameplay stuff and all that I always enjoyed that. The cutscenes are ass, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I have a I, I'm, I'll at least play my league. If nothing else. I will absolutely play my league. And yeah, I'm, I have a custom league going. Like a completely custom league. Oh, God. I figured he'd. I figured the mismatch would allow him to actually make that, but. Yeah, well. But yeah, I gotta say, I've. Uh, I've probably put like even if I haven't done it on stream, I've probably put at least a good thirty hours into it already. Backs him down. Far side from twenty feet out. Oh, he had it. There we go. Joiner inbounds the ball. Yeah, I just hated my career and I didn't want to try to do a series of my career. Cause I feel like I'd be Forcing myself to play something that I didn't really feel like playing. I'd much rather do... I'd much rather do a My League and, uh... You know, something... Something for a team. There we go. Oh, yeah, VC is horrendous. There you go. Gotten on a little bit of a run here, at the, I think. Uh, at least a 9-2 nine, nine run, something like that. Because it was like 5-13. to 13, Might have been 5-15. I don't know. We've been on a nice little run right now, though. But yeah, VC is ridiculous. That's why I'm perfectly fine playing my league. Because, yeah, my GM... It doesn't need G VC, but... Yeah. It's one of those things that I can I can have perfectly fun, you know, perfect perfect amount of fun doing something like my league <clears throat> where I don't need a lot of VC unless I want to get like maybe little extra pieces of, you know, trying to maybe get a trade to go my way or whatnot. Um, yeah, other than that, you know. Yeah, I haven't really touched my career, though. I literally have not touched my career since I did that stream, though. I haven't really felt like it. Although I did find one thing kind of funny is apparently there's no, like, modifier on the VC. Like there was in previous years. So you it literally doesn't matter if you play on, like, Hall of Fame or just Pro. Like, you can play on Pro difficulty, and that's... Oh, that was that was that was nice. That was very nice. 
So yeah, they don't have a multiplier. So you could literally play on pro and destroy destroy people and have it be you know, have it be even better than Hall of Fame cuz there's no wow. I don't know what the hell that was. Of course, I might stand corrected later on. They might uh, patch that in later. Who knows? Someone like three, four months from now might stumble across this and be like, they patched it in. It's in the game now. It's like, well, wasn't in there when I played it. So kind of ruins the ability to uh, feel invested. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. I feel like I probably could have uh, easily just uh, walked my way in there. There you go. And, uh, yeah, it looks like WWE is doing something weird. Like they, I don't know what they called it, but it was like, oh yeah, you could, uh, you know, play stuff in my career and all that to uh, earn, to earn uh, different, uh, what was it, like to earn different items, like randomized items. And it was like, yeah, you can earn various randomized items playing through my career and and uh, other stuff like that. And it was just like, what, you mean loot boxes? Just, just say loot boxes. It's you're you're introducing loot boxes to the WWE games. Just ever since they started introducing VC, and they haven't had VC in the WWE games, I've literally been just waiting for the day that they find a way to introduce VC into WWE games. I know it's literally it's been like ever since probably like what 2K15. Like I realize it's it's literally just a matter of time. And they're very close, but they might take a slightly different approach with, like I said, with the randomized stuff. It's like, oh, this is how you can unlock moves and costumes and everything. I'm like, the, the, you're literally describing loot boxes. And, like, they're saying it, the big deal is that there's no microtransactions. It's all earned. And it's like, all right, it's all earned this year. This year. Next year. It's like to, uh, I don't I don't trust 2K as far as I could throw them, uh, simply because of how 2K18 has been with what they like how much patience they will test of people, and uh, yeah I'm imagining next year we're gonna see we're gonna see VC in WWE 2K, some sort of some sort of microtransaction deal. Yeah, it really does. It really does bother me when people. It really bothered me on like day one. Like you can see in that stream on day one, I like turn on 2K, and there's you know, it's not everybody, but there's more than I was comfortable with as far as people who were on day one like already somewhere in the 80s with um with with stuff. Like I'd seen like the uh, Legend Edition and all that, and I gotta admit the the prospect of like the Shaq jerseys was pretty cool. But I like looked at the because I I really loved Shaq, and they had the they had the Orlando Magic version. Oh my god, that sucked! But for the price that they were asking, like those better be like actual Shaq jerseys. They better not damn well be like they better not be in-game items it, for a hundred and fifty dollars you better be giving me actual shack jerseys with my purchase I don't care how cheaply they're made <laughs> I better be getting something I ain't just doing like a, a pack of VC and then some extra nonsense that means nothing I heard though that they dropped the price on uh, the extra stuff like haircuts and all that which I also found was kind of fucked up was the fact that apparently um, I didn't really check it because I never did it long enough but apparently in like your my career when you go for like a haircut or whatnot 
you'll do your haircut and you can like reorganize your facial hair and all that, but you don't keep that. You don't like unlock it through VC. You have to if you want to change your hair again and you want to change it back to something that you've already had once, you have to repurchase it. And that like really got to me. I'm like, nope. Not using my VC on haircuts then. I'll just be happy with what I have. But yeah, I, it's it's literally one of those things that like I I'm listening to the to what they're gonna do with WWE and the unlocking of stuff, and it's like you're you're literally describing loot crates, like loot boxes, like turning WWE into like an Overwatch type thing, and they do it pretty okay in Overwatch because I've never bought a loot box and there's never been a need to. But if you're like putting costume like it like if you're putting moves and stuff costumes are one thing but if you're putting like moves and stuff behind that that feels like game content that you know you could actually have because what if someone creates something with locked moves that they earned man we are down by 10 gotta buy their shirt to own the bonuses yeah you have to you have to and then you have to like wear the stuff like I saw, um, I saw the deal where you have like a press conference, and it's like, oh, you have to take your Gatorade with, you know, do you take your Gatorade with you? And if you don't take your Gatorade with you, then you don't get the Gatorade bonuses. It's like Jesus Christ. And then like they asked a question, and like your two choices were to stay on topic when they were asking about. It's like it's like you're sitting there with your Gatorade bottle and the Gatorade bottle's sitting there and you're doing the press conference and it's literally like one question and it's like okay you have two choices stay on topic and actually talk about what they what they wanted from you or or um or uh, talk about your Gatorade <laughs> like are you fucking serious Did you know that Gatorade sponsors NBA 2K wasn't sure if you knew. He hopes to shake up the opponent's confidence. Back to you, Vern. Thank you, Tracy. Well, <laughs> I think I think Gatorade might have some sort of financial stake in NBA 2K. Just a just a just a just a guess. There you go. Them and, uh, oh, God, I, wasn't it like Krispy Kreme or Dunkin' Donuts or something like that? I thought one of them. I thought there was some sort of food place that also seems to have a financial stake in it. I can't remember who it was. But, yeah, you can't get your Gatorade bonuses unless you take your Gatorade with you and then you shill Gatorade. And it's like, is this really? Can you imagine? Like, no one's going to have. It's it's one of those things where, you know, if you have, like, nostalgia for certain games, like, you'll play, like, an N64 game or a PlayStation game and go, oh, my God, I felt so nostalgic about that. Like, I've, I'm wondering if 10 years from now we'll be looking at these games with the same sort of nostalgia as like like take a wrestling game around here for example you know take a wrestling game for example like people get nostalgic for no mercy and and you know smackdown here comes the pain and day of reckoning i don't see people in 10 years being nostalgic over wwe 2k i don't know I feel like if they keep adding stuff where <laughs> the servers are shut down so you're locked out of half the content, you won't be nearly as nostalgic as you will. I, I, I feel like people will still continue to be nostalgic about the PS2 and GameCube games. Like It's like, hey, remember, before, remember the time before they started introducing all this horse crap into it? Those were the days. Certain games will be remembered more fondly. I th probably I could see, I could see, um, I could see certain modes in games being remembered fondly. Like if you remember, like WWE 13 with the Attitude Era mode, or I think 12 had the WrestleMania mode. I can see those being considered nostalgic. I can't see a whole lot else being considered nostalgic about it, though. I don't. I, I can't think of too much for. Um, 
for uh, you know 2K16 and 17. Uh, maybe some of their storyline modes there people might might be nostalgic for. Because it's like, oh, man, I remember when we used to be able to play with this and that and everything else. I guess I guess we'll come to see if people get nostalgic over like a my career mode in WWE or if we'll look back at it as like a holy cow can you believe that it used to be this simplified Remember when you had to remember when you would beat John Cena on SmackDown and then you would have to face him 18 more times and then maybe get an Intercontinental title shot those were the days <laughs> Like, I do know when it comes to some NBA 2K games, people are sort of nostalgic for, like, 2K11 and 2K12. Maybe not so much 2K12. I don't remember. 2K11, though, definitely. 12, 12 maybe as well. Uh, 13 maybe. Yeah, if it was made by fans or just for money. Like like how um like how they reintroduced uh someone made a mod that basically reintroduced um multiplayer into the original Star Wars Battlefront two. Like that's some cool like that's like all right, I can't like I myself am like really excited to potentially do that. Like be able to potentially play Battlefront two online again. Because I never really even got to play online. Like, whenever I would play multiplayer of Battlefront or Battlefront 2, it was always, like, local multiplayer with, you know, a, a friend or two. But I don't see someone being nostalgic over any of the new ones. There was a... There was a... I forget what the Halo game was. That was, uh... I forget what the Halo... The name of the Halo game was... That was almost like a um, a modded version of a Russian version of Halo or some European version of Halo that works online. I actually played it a little while and thought it was really fun. I just kind of forgot about it after a little while. I forget what it was, but it was on PC and it was it played just like Halo Three and had a lot of Halo Three esque stuff. I'd have to try to find that again. The only reason you know is kind of wanted 2K18, then you read the reviews. <clears throat> People still play it? Yeah, because I had it installed and I played it for a little while, and then I kind of forgot about it, and it's probably still on my hard drive somewhere because uh, I don't remember taking it off, so... I feel like I probably still have it if I looked. But yeah, that was fun. I don't think it kept track of much of anything either. I think I think that was kind of the fun little thing is that you weren't really keeping track of like leveling or, you know, ranking or anything like that. It was literally just it was literally made just so people could like go into games and play it. Like that's all it was. It, you didn't have to worry about you know, too much nonsense with that. Which is fine, because I don't remember being all that great at Halo 3. Halo Reach, though. I haven't played Halo in forever. But you put me on Halo Reach. Put me in a SWAT game. I can clean up. <laughs> I don't know if they still do that. Infected was another one. I kind of miss those. Just put it up. There you go. I feel like at least with WWE, they have the right idea with um, with career mode. I don't know if they're going to start introducing stupid stories into it like they do most other things. But um, 
I always like the very basic idea of maybe having a basic story, but you're still starting, like, maybe in the development center and working through NXT and then the WWE. Actually, I think in 2K17, you could have skipped NXT altogether if you did well enough, because I think that's what I did. I don't even think I ended up in NXT at any point. But I feel like they have the right idea as opposed to 2K. Because I feel that, like they, if they're literally, if they're putting in all this, like, it's super simple as far as stuff is concerned. I think, I think it might have been like 2K11 that they had all the D League stuff. And so it was like, all right, you start off, you play some games. Um, if you do well enough in those games, then you could end up with a roster spot. If you don't do too well, you might still end up on a roster spot, but you're going to be playing in the D-League for a little while. I, th I know it was in 10 for sure. I don't remember if it was still in 11 or not. But I remember that being a thing where it was like... you it, like I feel like a career mode in a basketball game is super fucking simple. Like, they did the high school games, so you do, like, mock high school games to maybe determine a place of how well, you know, maybe you'd have a certain choice of uh, colleges, depending on how well you do. And then you have a small college career, and then, depending on how you do in your college career, that would be your NBA, you know, if you get drafted or not. I feel like that's super simple. And they don't they don't just do that anymore. And if you do really well, you can get a high draft pick. You can end up on the NBA team and maybe even start. If you don't do so well, you might still get drafted maybe second round or so, go to the D-League and have to work your way up. Either way, you can still kind of make your own story. They are, they are looking to... They are looking to do this. Let's see if they get this. Yeah, I really thought they were headed the right direction when they started getting the NCAA teams. It's like, hey, even if it's 11 teams. Like, I was literally, like, when they did, like, NCAA basketball, I'm like, you know what? This is a, this is a, a good start. They can maybe work with this, you know, after the next year. And then it was... And then they just sort of scrap the whole thing, and it's like, I'm sure it costs money. I'm sure it does. But damn, were you going the right direction? You were going the right direction with this NCAA basketball. Yeah, I figured I figured it's because they were selling millions of copies, like legit millions of copies, that they were trying to do more to kind of appeal to even more people. I feel like they didn't even need to do that, though. Because they were already doing well enough without having to do that. Dude, yeah, the NCAA stuff, like, they were, t uh, like, in my mind, they were completely on the right track with that. They were, like, it's like, all right, oh, damn. It's like, all right, 11 teams, this is a solid start. You know what? They can maybe build upon this next year. And then they just, like, it, it's just nothing. Ah. Uh, I'll do it like that. And then. Wow, kind of dipped around all of them to get that. Six points, two minutes left. Let's go. Just got to not be too awful. Oh, boy. There you go. Force your way in. Well, he got there inside, but it looked like he was leaning when the contact occurred. I guess when they made it an actual story, they were selling more. But I, like, I would love to. I would love to. Maybe, maybe it is like a. Maybe it's like a. Uh, uh, um, 
is there such is there being such a thing as a smark for basketball? Because I felt like the general idea with a lot of these stories is that people didn't really like the story part. Maybe they are just bringing in like a whole lot of like casual people that you know aren't very vocal about their love or hatred of the game. And we're just a very, you know, those of us who maybe don't like the story aspects are just a very vocal minority. Then again, I really, I didn't mind the story aspects as long as they're done well. Like, I wasn't a big fan of the Spike Lee thing. I think um, the storyline of not getting drafted and then going to, like, 10-day contracts and all that and really having to prove yourself, I thought that one was pretty okay. Um... This year's was kind of bad. Maybe it's like just in every other year they seem to get the story pretty okay. They just every other year they just have to throw in something, throw in something absurd. Sales exploded when they added to the story elements. Oh boy, yeah. So I guess because <laughs> I know there are a lot of people who aren't big fans of it, but yeah, they were just just a vocal minority. <laughs> It was an incentive. It, it is a nice incentive. But yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm. Maybe I'm just. Maybe I'm just really old school. But I just love the idea. My 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 perfect career mode would be just a very simple. You can add in some cutscenes and all that. But more more often than not, you do the high school thing. You do a few high school games like you did. Um, I think it was 2K16. You do a few high school games, maybe get your choice of colleges. I don't know how many colleges you want to put in there. You do your college deal. Depending on how well you do in college, depends on kind of um, where you might get potentially drafted. So you get you, you get your stats pushed up against like other people's, and then that kind of determines where your draft is. And so you're you're competing in college to try to get a decent draft spot and if you do well you might get a, a high first round pick if you don't do well maybe you get second round you have to spend a little bit of time in the G League work your way up and then above all else depending on how well you do might affect what your um, skill rating would be when you get into the NBA Rather than being some like 55 or 60 overall first round pick, you can maybe be you can maybe get enough VC to get up to like you know 70. If you go to a Lakers game with your fans, your friends won't even know who the fuck these guys on the roster are. All the great video games had good stories. Sports games are just repeat. Yeah, good point. It is a good point. I don't mind the stories as long as they're done well. Maybe that's the thing. Is I wasn't like I said, I certainly didn't mind the um I certainly didn't mind the story aspect. I think it was in 16. I think it was 16 when uh or was it 15 that yeah, cuz 16 was the Spike Lee thing. 17 was the coming up in basketball as orange shoes. I think 15 was the story that had um, that that had you like undrafted and having to work your way in as basically a walk on having to prove yourself 16 maybe just felt weird because I was a you know I was a center so I was a 7 foot tall pasty white dude with an all black family and a black sister Just the most ghetto white dude ever. All right, we'll get to that. No. All right. Let's do recruiting. Oh, that helped. All right, I think he's pretty much a lock at this point, but we'll make sure. How much of that time is it going to take? Okay. So we'll visit him, email and phone. 
That's 90 points. We'll come back to that. We'll have him go talk. Uh, email and phone. Email and phone. How many points do I have? 57. We'll have him go request a game tape. That might help. We'll have him request a game tape. All right. <clears throat> I think we pretty much have this guy in the bag. I don't know about the other guys at this point. We still have an opportunity to come back with some of these guys. Uh, we've done all the home visits, unfortunately, with him. So maybe campus tour might be the only thing left. If we have the opportunity to do that. There we go. Wisconsin. Story mode, it makes it kind of fresh. It's a bit more... Yeah, I mean, I don't mind it. I think I would rather. I think I would rather not have to be force fed a certain. Maybe, maybe that's the thing. As far as story goes, I don't mind story. I just don't like being force fed a certain, like a certain personality and character type. I think I would much rather have have a guy who. I don't know. I don't know what I want. <laughs> Maybe I just don't know what I want. Other than what I what I said was the ability to kind of like work your way into a really good spot to start off with. College sports games have a wrong notion of what constitutes fun, especially in recruiting. To be fair, like I don't mind the simplicity of this. I think I think there's a real I think there's a nice simplicity to do to the recruiting in this game. Like it's like it's there's not as much as uh, NCAA basketball, but it's done much more smoothly as opposed to just a lot of the nonsense with recruiting um, in NCAA basketball 10. It's annoying seeing the, yeah, it's annoying seeing the same cutscenes. I can I can see that. There we go. And they're up by four. Bounces it to the left. Ah there we go. Yeah, this game is ten years old, and there's a there's a nice, and to be fair, like this actually is a bit more involved of a recruiting process than say NCAA football fourteen, which was literally assign point like assign um, points, which I guess I didn't mind because it kept things very simple, but also you know the idea of having to manage your time a little bit to do certain things. Um, I think would be a little bit better. I think the ability to upgrade my charisma and then being like, okay, I need to use my... Wow! What is... Uh, did he just, like, literally break his ankle? <laughs> I'm not even... I wasn't even guarding him, and my guards are just, like, wiping the floor with them. They can't get anywhere. Wisconsin's getting beat the fuck out right now. Go ahead, move backward. There you go. What is this? <laughs> What is he? What are they doing? I mean, I'm certainly not complaining because this is this is amazing. I've never seen such lockdown defense by my by my uh, by my team. This lockdown defense is quite something to to watch. Greatest flop of all time. Devox Devox sends us sheds a tear. He's already shedding tears, isn't he? In charge of the Kings. Oh no, that was the wrong guy. There was, there was a a shooting guard right there that probably should have taken that. There you go. And so we football thirteen area. There's the same garbage. Yeah. The assigning points thing. I like it simplistic, but I don't like it that simplistic. Like, that's some, like, I feel like NCAA Basketball 10 got their recruiting, like, it's, it's like, this is a lot of, this is a lot of nonsense. <laughs> I feel like this has a good, a good blend of, like, simple, but 
Um, still pretty okay. And then 14 just has, like, how many points did you put in? Now you can upgrade to put more points for somebody. It's like, ah. You're bummed you missed my fantasy draft. Yeah, it's all right, you know. I don't know when I'm going to start playing. I did get everything taken care of last night. It was a pain in the ass, but I got it. Healed is the next Steph Curry. Oh, my God. You're critiquing every pick. Good on number two. I'm sure. Inbounds the ball. I'm I'm sure. Left in the half. Just like Louis Scola, really? Out of all the people you could have possibly brought in, Louis Scola? Jared Sullinger? You know he's injury prone, right? I'm imagining you just watching it getting pissed. Like, you only got Niang because he plays for Iowa State. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but when I saw Niang, I don't, I don't think he uh, is actually so assigned to anybody. Channing. I considered Channing Fry, but I was like, no. Skull is going to be a bit more, bit better underneath the boards. Defensively, he'll be better. At least that's my feeling. Oh, my God, I suck. There you go. All right, we're kind of letting them come back on us, so let's do something about that. There we go. Keep this nice little lead that they gave us to start off. Just keep a good seven points between us, and we'll be fine. Woo! Perfect. Oh, my God. I don't know what I was doing. I was, like, half paying attention. The next thing I know, he's in the crowd. I forgot that this game totally has a uh, a create a team in it, too. Like, you can create a custom team. I don't know how many. I certainly want to... <laughs> a custom NCAA. Everything is just Division Three basketball. Boom. I'll take it. Yeah, the game really doesn't seem to like... Like, the game is perfectly fine with you changing logos and everything, but the game really doesn't seem to want you to have 30 completely custom teams. It's not very fond of that. Well, I literally just let that bounce right off his face. It's taken a little bit of maneuvering, and I still don't. I still haven't, like, opened up, opened it up again to uh, see if it's all still there. But, yeah, the game's really not fond of trying to do 30 custom teams. How? He was pretty much open. That was the thing that really gets me is he was pretty much open on that one. See, he made that one, and that was much more contested than the shot we just put up. See, that was just as contested. Put it in. You don't need to create a team. You already have four Iowa teams, yeah. <laughs> To be fair, how many goddamn California teams are in here? And presumably Texas as well. Most of those major states with a lot of people in it have got a crap load of 
teams in here. He gets them both. There you go. Inbounds the ball. The I have to make an online save for my league. Hands it off. Hmm. Yeah, I did kind of start like a my league on like I had to go into my league online to finish up a couple of teams because the game didn't like um, me trying to edit too much stuff in there. It would get a few teams in. It was like, no, we're not gonna let you save anymore. And it's like, why? And like any time I tried to find a solution to the issue, it's literally like clear your cache, which. They don't ever explain what clearing the cache is. Apparently, it's just turn your console off and then on again, which I'm on a PC, so clearing the cache is much different. But yeah, it's just like everyone's, you know, I keep seeing people are like, what do they mean by clear the cache? And it's like literally just turn, turn it off and turn it on again and see if it works. It's like that's the dumbest tech support thing I've ever heard. I like I know that's always the first thing. That they'll ask if you tried turning it off and on again. But, I mean, it's literally a running gag. And to know that that's, like, official Ronnie 2K tech support for things that go wrong is absurd. I mean, there is cash, but like uh, on PCs, but I mean, it's a totally different thing. It's not really game cash or computer cash. And he makes the first. He you made a whole conference for Florida, Texas, and California. Right around four minutes left in the half. That's pretty cool. I remember the team builder in that. Like, there were a lot of um, teams that my high school faced, as well as my own high school, that was in there. And I remember making, like, a... I remember being able to do a Road to Glory with, like, a senior year in high school with football with relatively accurate uh, season. Jorjevic backs him down. Catches it. Middle. I'm trying to draw a foul here, and then they're just like, no, that was no foul. Oh, man, I'm tired. I've been meaning to uh, donate plasma. I think I've talked about that before, but my younger sister does it, and they opened up a, uh, a place down the road with which to donate plasma. And I'd like to do it. And they open up at like 7 in the morning. So I think it takes like an hour, hour and a half. Sacrifice a little bit of sleep. I could probably do it today. It's not really my Friday, but it's kind of close because I don't work Thursday. I work I work Wednesday, tomorrow, today, whatever you want to call it. I work in, in less than 12 hours, but then I don't work on Thursday at all because I'm going to a movie. And I'm and I'm actually kind of happy because the uh, movie theater, I guess, had just up had they had just got done upgrading like all of their seats to uh, powered loungers. So they're all like the leather lounger chairs with the cup holders and the uh, and the the footrest things that come up. So yeah, I'm I'm super excited for that. <laughs> and I have my movie pass card, so I can make a habit out of going going to the theater. On a regular basis, without having to spend too much money. House has it left side. <laughs> Tyler has a date. <laughs> I, I, you're not wrong. I don't know if you're right in particular, but I don't think you're completely wrong. 
least I would like to say you're not completely wrong. I don't know if uh, the person I'm going with would say that. <laughs> I sleep on stripper hours, though. It's fine. I, I really do. <laughs> I sleep on overnight hours because I literally... Like, my hours seem weird, but this is literally how I've lived my life for, like, um, about eight years now, since, like, 2009, because when I first started working for the Postal Service, it was overnights, because if you were a temp, if you were a temp worker, you didn't work the normal, like, you didn't work the normal people hours, because everyone who was already in, with the foot in their door with a career job there who got actual benefits, they were the ones who were able to do like morning and evening shifts. So I did night shift for like the first, holy crap, five years I was there. So it was only just recently that I actually, it was only like maybe three years ago that I wasn't working overnights. And so I just kind of decided to keep, you know, it's like why change my schedule at this point to try to go to bed at like, Two in the morning or something. Select seats. Yeah, it is. It is assigned seating, as far as I remember. So that's that's also kind of interesting. Is there is there was like I I picked out assigned seats. So it was kind of funny because there wasn't a t there hasn't been a ton of tickets sold, or at least when I bought them a couple weeks ago, and. Um, and uh, it was kind of funny because just about every row was taken with, like, the middle two seats. It's always, it was always, like, two, maybe three seats um, in the middle of uh, each row. And I think I took, like, slightly offset from everybody else. I did, like, sli like a slight shift to the right, like, over one seat because I'm 6'4". So I was like, all right, she can have this seat. And I'll I'll go to this one where there isn't someone directly behind me. Because not only am I six four, but I, you know, if I'm not wearing my hat, I generally spike my hair up, so that adds a couple of inches there. Please explain Movie Pass. Um, <laughs> that's the most tortured yes I've ever heard. <laughs> Uh, movie pass basically um, you sign up for it it's 9.99 a month and I'm not paying for Netflix anymore so savings pretty much went to there um, mostly because I realized I wasn't using Netflix anymore that and I guess something happened to my account so Netflix shut it down and I was just like ah eh, fuck it I don't really use it so it's like 9.99 a month and um, you download an app on your phone. Uh, the movie pass app on your phone and what'll happen is you get you you have like your address your name and stuff and movie pass will send you a debit card I have a mastercard debit card and what it does is oh that was a dumb idea and so what it does is that you take that debit card with you to the movie I just keep it in my wallet um, and on your movie pass app you can scroll through your local theater, any participating theater, which is like most of the major ones around here. Any one of them worth their salt uh, are generally participating. Uh, I don't know if they, that might change soon. We'll see. But at least all the nice ones around here are, are using it. So you can scroll through the local listings of movies, and they'll each have their own separate button, so it'll be listed down by movie. So it's like It or, you know, whatever, just like all the movies that they're showing and then the times that they're showing, and each time is like a button. So you can press the button, and what it does is it uh, checks you in. If you're within, you have to have your GPS on. So if you're within 100 yards of the uh of the movie theater like the gps locates you as being you know within really close proximity of the movie theater um you can press the button assign the ticket for that time where it was like i want to see it at 9 15 so you'll find it and all the times and you'll press 9 15 if you're close enough it'll assign that for you and then um Basically, it, I guess it puts money on the debit card, and so you use your MoviePass debit card to purchase the ticket. 
So it's still kind of the whole, you know, you're buying, you're you're still kind of buying the ticket, but because you have uh, this service, the the company that you're paying, you know, the Movie Pass company, is basically paying for your ticket. And uh, I think you're allowed to go to one movie a day. Um, as far as I knew, it used to be a 24-hour period, but I think it resets at midnight now. So if you were to go to like a 9 p.m. showing on one day, and the next day you want to go to a 7 p.m. showing, that's perfectly fine. Or if you go to like a midnight showing. So it was like you go to maybe like a 9 p.m. movie, and then you want to go to a midnight showing that's happening. You can do that, at, you know, once it hits midnight. So yeah, it sounds it sounds complicated. I think I made it sound complicated, but basically, yeah, it's what it is. You have an app, you find the the movie in time, you check in, they put money on the card, you buy your ticket with the card, you're good to go. Yeah, a monthly subscription, you get free movie tickets, but once a day. Yes, one movie per day, you get a free ticket too. Which really isn't bad, considering I spend you spend about that. If you go once a month, it still pretty much breaks even because I like at least here movie tickets are still generally about ten dollars. Um, defense. We're almost twenty points up, by the way. We're seventeen up, so we're probably about ready to uh, call it good. Is there a ticket limit per movie? I mean, it's just one ticket. You know, it's one subscription, one ticket. You're not, you can't buy like multiple tickets with it. It's just one ticket. Yeah, you can't go with like three other friends and then like, it's like, all right, I got it, guys. And then you can just buy, you know, four tickets for you and all your friends. It's just, you know, one movie, one ticket every day. Yeah, that would really lose them some serious money if they were able to do that. <laughs> if you were able to do that, that would lose them. It's already one of those things where people are talking about, like, how they're maybe able to get away with only having to, to you know, do $10 a month. And if you, and I can only imagine the idea of going out on a very regular basis. Yeah, I want to I wanna try, I want to try with, like, some of my friends to go... On a regular basis, I would like to. I would like to try to talk them into it, so we can make going to the movies like a weekly thing. That'd be nice. Just be like, "What do you want to do?" I don't know. We got some free time and not a whole lot of money. Maybe we can just go to a movie. I like I like that ability to because you're paying for a certain service you can kind of go out and do that and like have the actual go out and experience society without having to spend too much money for the price of for the price of popcorn and soda if you want yeah for ten dollars one movie a week yeah even even one movie a week would be but yeah it's it's <laughs> one movie a week would more than pay. If you went to one movie a month, it would it would pay it off. But I mean, you're able to go to one per day, which I can only imagine. There's some really lonely soul out there who goes to a movie every day with their card. I don't want to. I don't want to think about the guy who has the time and energy on his hands to just go to a movie every day, because you know. For for everything that's like that, someone's taking full advantage of the service. <laughs> for every person like me who might go to a movie like once a month or so, you know, and kind of break even on stuff, there's some guy out there who's going all the time. I can only imagine. I can only imagine once like a Marvel movie comes out. Just like this is the fifth time this week that he's here. Yes, one more for one more for Justice League. Thank you. How many times have you seen Justice League? Eighteen. It's been three weeks. That's a lot of money. Nope, I got this movie pass thing. There you go. 
16 points, and he's the top scorer. Hester's doing a good job of canning a lot of these shots. Can we hit 20? I bet you I'm probably still perfectly fine, but I'd like to be able to hit 20. Here we go. Oh. Juman oh, God, I forgot Jumanji's a thing, too. I'm I'm a little I'm curious as to what Jumanji is going to look like. Catches it left corner. Camper passes it back to the wing. I never I'm never like the I don't know. We'll see what happens. Oh yeah, and Star Wars, dude. Star Wars is going to really And I think Tracy has some Star Wars is going to be crazy with that. Coach Ryan gathered his guys on the sideline. Ah, that wasn't what I wanted, but I made it. Okay, cool. 21. Yay, sim to the end. Dunsky. Wow. Didn't do too bad. 68.50. And you still haven't said what movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, I still haven't said what movie. Oh, it's uh, No Game, No Life Zero. Yeah, that weeby shit. We're both we're both like into anime and I've kind of bonded over that and just, you know, throwing out anime related jokes and all that and No Game No Life Zero has a sub version coming out Thursday. They also have a dubbed version, but I don't really particularly care. There we go. All right. We're doing pretty well. I think we'll be able to get them. I found a girl into anime. Yes, I did. <laughs> She's into much different anime than me, though. It's one of those it's one of those things where it's like, "Man, I really love like action battle stuff." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's kind of cool too. Sure. Why not?" What a way to end the game. Yeah. In a theater in Iowa. Yeah. One. A single theater. I do got to say, I do enjoy the fact that I literally live five minutes down the road from the one theater, from like arguably the biggest, like the, the most, um, like, like, uh, because there's a, there's a mall. There's a, there's a mall here in Iowa and I live like five minutes down the road from one of the biggest malls in the state with a movie theater and it's the one movie theater that tends to get like everything. So like when the sword art online movie happened, I was able to go there when, uh, uh, your name came out. I was able to go there. You know, it's this, I like, I enjoy the fact that the theater actually, it's the one theater in the, in the state that seems to get all this stuff and have the, um, have the, uh, connections to do these anime movies. So yeah. <laughs> to be fair, when it came to your name, there was a lot of places playing it. Uh, Sword Art Online was uh, much more rare, I think. But it was more than one, but it was still pretty rare. Uh, I think, as far as No Game No Life is concerned, I think it's the one. The one I'm calling. It's literally the only one. <laughs> so I feel pretty good about that. By the way, I have no idea what I'm going to play after this. I got ideas. Like, I could totally do another episode of Disgaea. There's that. Um, I do have Pokemon Pokemon Tournament DX. I don't know if I f want to play that or not. Like, I, I'll, I can play it. <clears throat> I don't know if people will be interested in, like, a one-shot or whatnot of it. I also haven't played Heroes in a little while. I finally got around to it for the first time yesterday in like a week. I haven't played it in a little bit. And I did really well yesterday. I, I had I had a really good set of games yesterday coming back. With some with some characters I'm usually not the best at, but 
managed to pull off some really nice games. Plus, there were some really stupid people I was playing. Knocks down the first one. Where they would just get, they would actively like find a way to get themselves directly in the way of things that I was putting down to attack them with. Gets the second to fall as well. Did I hear about the Hooniverse? I kind of heard about the Hooniverse. I haven't really heard too much about it, though. I know it exists. That's about all I know about that. Is that I know it exists. I haven't really... I don't really know too much... Too many details about it. It just reminds me that I should really consider, like, continuing to work on my fantasy mod. But, like, I've... Between... Like Hawkeye Pro and some of the other nonsense. I always have like other stuff that I've been working on. Like, <laughs> I always have something else that I'm working on. If it's not like, if it's not Hawkeye Pro and booking and creating different stuff there, it's maybe NBA or, you know, CFC, something along those lines to ensure that my time is. Filled up doing that. TEW mod with a modern day territory sy territorial system. Custom companies each with a different theme. That's pretty cool. I, I will tell you it is. It's still kind of time consuming. But much easier to uh, create create companies and, and titles and logos and stuff. Than it is to start putting you know. 2,000 people into a into a, uh, uh, a mod. I'll tell you, if there's one time-consuming aspect of making a TEW mod, I can tell you right now, the most time-consuming aspect is putting the goddamn workers in. Not even, not even like, modifying them. Like, I have to just straight put, put them in. Like, from scratch. It's horrifying. I'm proud of myself that I've even gotten like 300 and... I think I'm like 367 in. It's either 367 or 347. I think it's 367. Pretty sure I passed 350. Real life wrestler still in beta or barely alpha. Yeah. Yeah, I remember hearing kind of about it, and I kind of read into it, and I kind of forgot what it was. Ugh. Yeah, making companies, making titles, events, event schedules and everything, that's, you know, that's okay. I can I can generally figure that out. It's... The most time-consuming aspect is, of course, populating your world. He's doubled up. That's, I went to pump fake and then pass. I actually had the button up to icon pass, but then he didn't do it. I figured he'd at least pass out of the shot, if nothing else, but then he didn't even do that. He was just like, nah, I'm just going to toss it up. Why not? You wanted to get a group of modders to make a UFC MMA like mod, but it flopped. Uh, I remember Diablo. The what was it? Um, what was it? Diablo X. Wasn't there something that was going to be like the over nine thousand verse, but was going to be named something else? I thought it was like Diablo X or something. And I guess everyone got busy, and that, and that Jesus Christ had like eight. Eight to ten people on it too. It wasn't even like a, a one man thing. It was legit like eight people working on it. And even that's like completely stagnant. Catches it. Left wing. Boom. Dumps it to the steal by Houston. Not a good decision, Vern. You can't just go ahead and force it inside like And I bet you I could probably as far along as I am, I could probably actually get it done. If I had like other people with the time to start putting characters in, 
The only downside is, is I'm I'm not really like a super control freak, but I have an idea. Like my my feeling is that if I wanted to make a mod with with you know wrestlers and putting in certain characters and all that, I would be really I'd be really like anal about <laughs> maybe what their ratings or their popularity or anything would be. I wanted I wanted to have some level of like control over making sure that it it was all fairly well uniform he's one for two from downtown I can always convert the 9000 TW to be fair like I because the mod that I'm making like I I've looked into that but it was one of those things where I'm not really I mean, yeah, you could always just convert the TW13 into 16 file and then just use that. I know they were trying to make a, a TW16 version of it and update everything, but they just never got to it. Like, it exists, but... Mm. He's off on the second. I said anal. <laughs> to be fair, like, that's... I think it's an appropriate enough word... Like, maybe not just in general, but it works. It works to get my point across. How can he miss that? It was literally right. There was no one on him. Oh. Oh. No. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work through this, and we're going to have this. We're going to have this good. Put it in, you fuck. God damn. Nice little crossover. Nope. Look at him ready to pounce on that Go, 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 go. Ah, uh, I feel like he shook off the defense enough. But I guess not. I kind of had a feeling as I was running up to the hoop that there's probably going to be too much defense to make it work. Why was there so much? Why was he like triple teamed? Is there any reason why there was like nobody on the those other perimeter guys? I feel like that was way too many people on one dude. Five seconds closely guarded my ass. What? What? Dude, I wasn't even closely guarded for more than a second and a half there. I got away from the. Uh, I got away from his defense, and I was backing him down in the paint. The fuck are you on about? That's some horse shit. Five seconds closely guarded. Go fuck yourself. That wasn't no closely guarded. I want to know what your, what your vision of closely guarded looks like, because I don't think it's the same as mine. Will you put a fucking ball on the hoop? Oh, you cocksuckers. See, when I'm paying attention to the game, then it's just like, eh, no, we're just going to... Oh, my God. Are you playing zone or some shit? Do we need to... Like, I'm not big on man-to-man -man defense all the time. But, I mean, if you can't keep on your fucking guy, we might have to. How the fuck did he get there that quickly, too? How in the hell do you manage that one? He got there super fast for a dude who was a good 20 feet away. He covered that 20-plus feet in no time at all. Cool. Yay. We were doing pretty A-OK, -okay, but now we've lost the lead and all that nonsense. I had other work I wanted to do today. I had all the time in the world, and I just, like, I forget what I was doing. I was just bumming around on the Internet on my phone. Just killing my battery watching YouTube. I think that was how my day was spent. See, look how, look how loose he is on him. There you go. Thanks, Tracy. Nice work by the big fella to get that rebound. Your Jevich. 
Oh, you missed the steal and freed him up. There's no question what kind of defense you're in, and that's man to man. Rap. There you go. There you go. No. 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 Oh, suck a dick. I don't know why he didn't just go forward to dunk it. That's another thing. That that's what perplexes me right there is he had there was no one like that dude was kind of standing under the hoop and I don't know why for the life of me he decided to go for some underhanded reverse layup. It's like there's literally just air in between you and the hoop. Why not just just kind of pull up something simple? You don't have to do some under the basket reverse layup bullshit right into the man that you're that's guarding you. Oh my god. That was ridiculous. I like how, like, now you learn how to pass out, but you didn't pump fake like I wanted you to. You, like, passed out of the shot. So thanks for that. See? I feel like they probably didn't have to be. I mean, I don't, I don't care what their team does. I care what my team does. Whatever NBA player, yeah, reverse under the basket layup. I know, you can't just, I don't get why you can't just like, hey, there's air in between me and the hoop. Let me just like kind of finger roll it up or something. Just kind of like lightly push the ball in. You know, jump up with the ball and then just give it a little push. Put a little air in between you. And there you go. Ah, oh, tired. Houston is having big problems from beyond the arc. I hate when the kids I coach can't. I know. How do I teach these kids? Oh my god! I keep. I feel like. I feel like the one dude on anger management. And I was like, yeah, Iverson missed a layup. End of game. And then him just going, you gotta dunk that shit. You gotta put it down. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Like that's how I feel. It's like you gotta dunk that shit. Just fucking dunk it. Stop being fancy and put it in. Holy crap! Look at all the three pointers they missed. Just saying, I felt it. Do you <laughs> calm down? Do you know I feel pretty? <laughs> We're all set to begin the second half. I still think about that. Like, I still remember just random quotes from that movie. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't. I don't think it was like a favorite movie of mine. But for some reason, that's just something I'll just remember random quotes of. Like, I remember just a random quote the other day from Anger Management where. He was like, you know, he's like, I've been doing your work and getting your coffee for six years now. And when a new position opens up, you give it to the biggest dick in the world. And then the guy goes, I don't know about the biggest in the world, but it's definitely the biggest one in the room. Like that, that's one that for, I don't know why that just like, I just randomly remembered that. Like, ah, it's not the biggest in the world, but it's definitely the biggest one in the room. <laughs> Like the um, I remember the dude who plays the the guy who plays the boss. I can't remember who he is because he's like he's one of those dudes that I can recognize the face. I just can't ever put the name to the face. I think it's like Russell something. 
I know. I think the character name that I remember him is Russell because he played, um, I think it was Russell. He was like Benjamin's like uh, right-hand man in Wayne's World. And then he was the boss guy in Anger Management. He's been doing he's been doing movies forever because he was also like the evil the evil like uh, boss slash wrestling promoter in No Holds Barred. Like he's been in a lot of shit, and I can't ever remember his name. I know he's been in a few other things too. I just can't really remember off the top of my head. Now I'm just remembering like Wayne's World quotes that he had. He's like, I can't betray Benjamin. Benjamin's my friend. Benjamin is no one's friend. If Benjamin were an ice cream flavor, he'd be pralines and dick. <laughs> this is what happens when I get tired and or bored. Is my mind just wanders and remembers random, random shit. There we go. Oh yeah, one of my roommates started watching Rick and Morty like last week. And I know that'll be somewhat controversial because like the two camps basically are... Are you either goddamn love Rick and Morty, and or or you goddamn hate Rick and Morty? And I gotta say, like maybe it's the maybe it's because I was watching like the first season, but it was one of those things. Is like it's kind of a funny show. I don't mind it. I always like I don't mind Dan Harmon's work, despite the fact I'm not a big fan of Dan Harmon as a human being. But I think Rick and Morty is funny. As long as you're not paying any sort of attention to the fan base, like at all. There it is. Oh, that involuntary, that involuntary um, fade away. Oh, get it down there. Yeah. Rick and Morty, somewhat good. Season three was real patchy, and overall, it just wax the same button over and over. Okay. Maybe I'm just maybe it's because I watched the first season. That's what I've that's what I've seen was a few episodes of season one. <laughs> Most memorable thing is Woody Harrelson playing it. Oh yeah, fucking anger management. Yes. Oh, I forgot about Woody Harrelson playing a a trans prostitute. I totally forgot that was a thing. Hey, man, what are you doing? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's your German accent? Oh, shit. <laughs> Hebrew Melvin's in love. I can't stop love. Yeah, Galaxia. Galaxia? It's Gary. <laughs> Couldn't remember the name. Thanks, <laughs> Galaxia. Ah. I'll take that. Um. Oh, well, you know what? Let's get let's get something way back here. There you go. There you go. Oh my god, you blew the wide open three. How do you manage that one? I gave you all the space in the world to make that happen. I already saw someone, um, what was it, with Cuphead? Cuphead looks interesting. I heard Cuphead is obscenely hard. Like, I heard it's an obscenely hard game. But there are already people talking like Cuphead might end up being one of those games like like uh, Undertale and Five Nights at Freddy's, where it becomes one of those, like, the game's pretty good, but it's being ruined by the fan base. Because <laughs> I actually, I actually, I think it was last year at an anime convention, they had an Undertale panel. 
I just didn't have anything going on and decided to go to it and woofa. I don't really have much of a feeling to play Undertale, honestly. <laughs> Cuphead does look good, but yeah, I've I've from what I've seen is it's apparently super hard and uh and yeah, people are people are believing that it's gonna go the way of Undertale and Five Nights at Freddy's where it becomes like a big hit. But eventually there's gonna be like part of the fan base that just makes it makes it something that people don't like. Uh okay. Don't know anything about the fan base of either Rick uh, of either, but Rick and Morty is kind of great. But it also does the community thing where it mocks tropes leaned on too often. I I can speak on like the first few seasons of Community because I fucking loved Community. I was behind Community from like day fucking one, and I gave season four a chance when they changed showrunners and Dan Harmon wasn't a part of it, and they still did all right. Uh, season five, of course, when Dan Harmon came back was good. I do admit there were things that they leaned on a bit, but I, I generally enjoyed community. Cartoony vintage Metroid game. I think that's another thing that kind of, that, that, that kind of gets to me too, is the character design being that of like old school cartoons. That's, I think that's another thing that makes me go, oh man. Just one more step to Roger Rabbit, the video game. Or at least a, a new version of it. I do remember that there was one, because I think I actually played it on my Game Boy Color. <laughs> Back when I had a Game Boy Color, I had a Who Framed Roger Rabbit video game. Boy, did it suck. But yeah, I really liked Community. Ah, probably not the right guy. There you go. No! That was a dumb idea. Oh, well. Had the VHS. Yeah, mine too. I had the I had the VHS of that. I need to watch that again. It's been it's been probably a couple years since I've seen it. I need to. I want to see that again. Honestly, now now that I'm thinking about it, I it's like God. I haven't seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit in a little while. I wouldn't mind watching that again. The Cougars with some difficulties. <laughs> oh my God! It's Dip. That's the shot you for, Bill. Judge Doom like legitimately scared the shit out of me, especially when he did his like uh, transition into a cartoon. I'm like, that is legitimately terrifying. I think when I was a kid, it was one of those things where I had such a hard time getting through the end of the movie because of... Or maybe not, was it Judge Doom or Judge Dredd? Oh my god, yeah, I think it was Judge Doom. But yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't... It was so hard to get through the end of that with, with cartoony Christopher Lloyd... And his crazy eyes. Both teams are going to shake things up a little bit with some subs. Gets the second to fall as well. There we go. He's needed out on the floor. He didn't get much of a rest. Blue inbounds the ball. About four and a half minutes left in the second half. Oh, look at that. There we go. I'm trying to think of other things. Oh, yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen it as far as the actual TV. I don't know. I'm sure it's probably already, like, I'm sure it's probably premiered at this point, the Orville. It looks interesting. I don't know how Seth, you know, Seth MacFarlane has always been iffy when it comes to acting in his own shows. We'll see. But I saw the trailer for the Orville and it just reminded me how much I love Galaxy Quest. <laughs> 
And I love the like uh, half the comments were like that too. Is like I've already seen the Orville. It was called Galaxy Quest. Oh, look at that! Don't you suck? Oh, he sucks too. Damn. The fuck just happened? It's all right. Oh, we got three minutes left. I bet you we're probably plenty okay to go, but eh. He said he always wanted to reboot Star Trek. But he more or less ended up rebooting. He more or less ended up rebooting Galaxy Quest more than anything, or at least a parody of Star Trek. Yeah, I guess this is his way. Maybe he could maybe he could do his own parody version of Star Wars. He could just rip off space balls. It's tipped and it's scooped up by Burks. Just too much contact there, Burns. You're not going to get away with it if you affect the shot that much. <laughs> he misses the first. Most of the feedback you heard people saying they expected a comedy ended up getting straight straight Star Trek. Interesting. Cuz yeah, the way they the way they portray it is more comedy than anything, not to mention it's Seth MacFarlane, so there's a certain, you know, distinction. There's a certain feeling of, of what of what to expect. It's like, oh, it's a Seth MacFarlane show, you know. Oh, damn. Rip off space balls. Ow. <laughs> It's called Family Guy Blue Harvest. Oh, yeah, dude, that was totally a thing. I remember that. Wasn't that supposed to be, like, rip off of Star Wars, though? Oh, yeah, 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 that, oh, yeah, that was his... Blue Harvest was his rip off of Star Wars instead of Spaceballs, yeah. It's interesting. Oh, my God. How do you miss both of those? How do you do that? Teach me your ways to have two really good shots go up and have them both fall. <clears throat> Gets it right side, raises up. Twenty footer was off by Trammell. Novak way up court. You have to hit that hard. To uh, there it is. Yeah, I should have just, I should have just gone in. I could have easily gone in for a dunk, and it would have been perfectly fine. It wouldn't have been an issue. But no, I had to go and do that. Damn. They're now down by twelve. Erg. Er, oh my God! Yeah, let's just go ahead and blow this lead now. I feel like I feel like we're too comfortable with the lead that we have. So let's just go ahead and uh, blow that right about now. Does that sound like an idea? Cool. Mm -mm -mm. What the hell? Okay, take a take a quick timeout. Let's just gather ourselves. Let's just gather ourselves together here, and figure out what we're doing. There you go. Oop. Ha ha. Waste time. Yeah, that's really. Just let me. Just burn the clock out a little bit. Ah. Uh, they're not really they're not really uh I'm still trying to draw a foul if if possible but Yeah, I'm mostly just trying to keep the ball out of their hands. Yeah, this is an NCAA football where you have to blow out teams to get rank, yeah. Yeah. 
What a great ending. <laughs> 58-46. We've had some iffy games, some iffy games offensively, but hey, if we're still beating some top 25 teams with it, I mean, I'll take it. I mean, it's not a, it's not a huge deal. A win's a win. Stanford's going to be interesting next next go around. Then there's Iowa. I assume with that I'm done for the night. Um, I mean with this, I don't know what I'm going to do after this. Honestly, there's there's other things I could maybe continue doing. I'm trying to see where I would be in my regular rotation. Otherwise, I might. Maybe play something on my Switch. Let me figure it out here in just a second. I'll, 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 at, least <clears throat> I'll at least end the video for people who, who watch this on YouTube. There we go. 10 and 1, 16th. That's probably going to be a little bit better come, uh, come next week. But, uh, hey, we have, we have gotten ourselves figured out here. We, we took an angry loss. Not angry, but a sad little loss to Kansas. But uh, there we go. Um, 10 and 1, 16th. Not too bad. Working our way in. And it looks like the next time I do this, uh, we'll be getting done with, I think, the rest of the regular season. because, Or at least most of it. I, I think there's still probably a couple teams I'm going to want to face. Uh, Brigham Young. Now that, I'm, now that I'm in a decent conference... Um, I'll probably want to play Brigham Young and I think UNLV. So, yeah, Brigham Young and UNLV, I think, are the two teams that I don't want to really chance having to sim against. So, especially considering UNLV is actually ranked two. So, I'll have Iowa and I'll have Stanford and then we'll... Do probably the Brigham Young game as well, and then sim down to the UNLV game. So we'll get through quite a few games, and then on that next one, it'll be um, UNLV, um, Brigham, you know, Brigham Young, UNLV, and then probably whatever's the first game in the uh, conference tournament. Now I'm in a decent conference. WCC had more bids of the Mountain West. Did they? I mean, we're working off a slightly different. Uh, we're working off a slightly different uh, version of 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 these conferences where, you know, this was this was based off of teams ten years ago where Gonzaga was pretty much leading everything, and that was, you know, about it. <sighs> but uh, I'll call it there. Like I said, we'll, we'll we won't play too many of the uh, conference games, but uh, we'll we'll play a few just to uh, hopefully make sure we don't, you know, do too poorly in our in our conference. I don't see us doing too poorly, but yeah, you never know. <laughs> Good old Hitbox, what's their story? Well, they're called Smashcast now, so and I don't stream to them anymore. <laughs> So, yeah, I'll think of something else. If anything else, I might just do a bargain bin. I haven't done a bargain bin in a while. I might take one of my cheap-ass games that are sitting over with the rest of my 360 stuff and look into that. But uh, either way, uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, I'll have, I'll have something else here on stream. But uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, there you go. Thank you for watching. Thank you for continuing to watch. And I will see you next time.